three major mistakes in most war movies. Over 70 years on, World War II continues to capture the interest of moviegoers. From soaring through the skies with Tom Hardy and Dunkirk to the absolute horror of the mud-flecked battlefield of the foot soldiers in Saving Private Ryan to the conscientious objector of Hacksaw Ridge and the heart-wrenching, real-life suffering of Jewish citizens in The Pianist. And thanks to the success of war movies, there are certain aspects of war and fighting that people today take as truth due to their prevalence on the silver screen. Reality, however, is not quite as neatly tied up for dramatic effect as it is in movies. Civilian Deaths Most war movies focus on the fighting, which is unsurprising because that's where all the drama and action is. Plus, let's face it, it's far more interesting to watch someone fight than it is to get helplessly gunned down in the street or die of starvation. All of which leads us to the misconception that you were, of course, logically safer back home than on the front lines. With soldiers dying all around you and those back home sat waiting for your return, it's easy to forget that back home, things were actually pretty awful too. Depending on the historian or paper you read, you'll likely find different casualty statistics in every one, as an exact figure is impossible to quantify due to inconsistent counting and different categorizations of civilian deaths. But historian Richard Bessel predicts that at least 60 million people died during World War II. One thing all agree on, though, is that far more died as civilians than soldiers on the battlefield. Fighting for fair injury compensation? You need battlefield support from the largest injury law firm in the USA, Morgan & Morgan. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without having to get up from your couch. War is fought using the latest tech. Morgan & Morgan has modernized the process of communicating with your legal team as well. No more hours spent poring over field maps of your paperwork or spending hours shouting into a walkie-talkie or online. In eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan and they'll have your intel ready to view. If you're injured and don't know where to start, with Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy to feel like you have dedicated troops ready to fight for your needs. They've helped over 3 million soldiers receive their fair compensation, recovering over $15 billion for their clients. Dial Pound Law from your cell phone or visit ForThePeople.com slash Simple History to see how Morgan & Morgan can help you secure your funds and get back on the battlefield. Dial Pound Law from your cell phone or visit www.ForThePeople.com slash Simple History to see how Morgan & Morgan can help you secure your funds and get back on the battlefield. Of course, many of these were Holocaust victims, but they were not the only ones to suffer or be killed during the war. Famine, disease, and bombings also played major roles in the number of civilians killed, in figures that reached unprecedented levels. As the war continued, Bessel suggests inhibitions of attacking civilian targets crumbled as the intensity of bombings of towns and cities increased. The Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, for example, resulted in the deaths of approximately 260,000 civilians immediately and countless others in later life from consequences of being near the initial explosions. Although there was one man who both luckily and unluckily ended up both in the blast radius of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, walking away from both relatively unscathed, here's to having some of the luck of Tsutomu Yamaguchi. Overall, across the entire world, it was a vicious and unprecedented attack on civilian life. But the USSR tragically suffered some of the worst of all, with nearly half of all deaths during the war being Soviet citizens. But in China, things were arguably even worse. The Sino-Japanese War that began in 1937 and continued until World War II's end was also at the forefront of civilian deaths. According to Bessel, the death toll in China alone was anywhere between 10 and 20 million. Whichever way it's sliced, though, the number of Chinese civilians who died far outweighed those of military casualties and actually exceeded the total numbers of war dead the German and Japanese suffered combined. Outbreaks of disease were partly to blame, but the Chinese also endured persistent, repeated bombings from the Japanese, with 268 hitting the city of Chongqing, 
just from 1939 and 1941. Furthermore, there were horrific atrocities committed by the Japanese to the Chinese during World War II, including both biological and chemical warfare. Life in Europe was not much simpler. For example, the Germans also had no qualms in using biological warfare, attempting to create a malaria outbreak in Italy. And lastly, a vast number of soldiers didn't die in action, but as prisoners of war. Bessel again estimates around 5 million military deaths took place in captivity and were the results of neglect, murder, and ill-treatment as POWs. So while war films focus on the battlefield, what's normally missing is the death and devastation back home. Shooting Bullets Through Water One of the most famous scenes in the plethora of war films available is of course the iconic and unforgettable D-Day battle at the start of Saving Private Ryan, a cacophony of noise, a rush of images, and the enduringly haunting scenes of young men collapsing to their deaths as they run along the Normandy beach. Considered one of the most epic battle scenes of all time and most accurate, it still took a few liberties with the truth. Despite Spielberg interviewing multiple veterans who were really there on actual D-Day, he still admits that there is one thing he changed for dramatic effect. We're talking, of course, about the bullets zinging through the water to strike and kill soldiers before they even reach the sand. However, in reality, bullets don't work that way. The inaccuracy was further emphasized by a popular episode of the show Mythbusters, who debunked the possibility once and for all for the masses. Testing multiple firearms As scientist professor Jeffrey Taylor explains, water molecules are packed together much more tightly than air, meaning it's much denser. Despite the bullet acting the same way it would on dry land, the constant collisions with water molecules stops the bullet much more quickly and long before it reaches its target. So, memorable and impactful scene? Yes. Historically accurate? Unfortunately not. Forgotten Victims of the Holocaust Six million Jewish people died in the Holocaust. It is a number burnt into many people's brains and, throughout Europe, concentration camps still stand in commemoration of those who suffered horrific atrocities at the hands of the Nazis. But what is often forgotten are the non-Jewish people who were also condemned by the Nazi regime. This can be seen across filmography of the Holocaust that makes little to no mention of the other minorities targeted for extermination. In The Pianist, for example, there's no focus on homosexuals, Sinti and Roma citizens, then known by the term gypsy, the physically and mentally disabled, black Germans or Slavs, among others, who were also subject to Nazi persecution. Although, as historian Ian Kershaw argues, these populations were never attacked or persecuted in a systematic fashion like Jewish people, and did not suffer comparable losses. Nevertheless, by excluding them completely, war films do history and these individuals a disservice in their retelling of the Holocaust. Premisil Dobias, for example, was a Czech citizen, arrested for helping Jewish people in the winter of 1941, and later sent to a labor camp before being taken to Mauthausen concentration camp, classed as an enemy of the Fuhrer. Along the way, he saw other Czech prisoners gunned down, chosen at random for extermination. Or there was Alex Osowski, a Polish citizen who fled to Warsaw and joined the Polish resistance. After being sent to Auschwitz in 1943, he later saw a number of Roma and Sinti taken and gassed. These are just two of the many non-Jewish people who found themselves in concentration camps, but there were countless more who didn't survive to tell the tale. The exact number of other victims of the Holocaust is unclear. Renowned survivor and self-proclaimed Nazi hunter Simon Wiesenthal claimed that the number of non-Jewish victims reached 5 million, but others have debunked this with famous Holocaust historian Yehuda Bauer claiming Wiesenthal told him himself that he made the number up. Others, like American professor Michael Berenbaum, suggest the number came from Wiesenthal's more broad definition of the Holocaust, 
taking on a universalist approach. Nevertheless, these non-Jewish victims deserve to be remembered. Kershaw suggests that of the 1.1 million murdered at Auschwitz, for instance, 100,000 were non-Jewish. Not a comparable number, but still 100,000 people who died. They were of different groups, who, according to Eugene Kogan, were divided into four categories by the Nazis. Criminals, inferior races, political opponents, and asocials, who could be defined as vagrants, pickpockets, gamblers, wife-beaters, and similar characters. Of those that died at Auschwitz, according to Kershaw, 70,000 were Polish political prisoners. More than 20,000 were Sinti and Roma gypsies, as they were then called, 10,000 were Soviet prisoners of war, and hundreds were homosexuals and Jehovah's Witnesses. And like Jewish prisoners wore the Star of David, they each had their own designation. The political prisoners wore red, criminals green with an S, Jehovah's Witnesses purple, asocials black, and homosexuals pink, occasionally the Roma and Sinti, and those classed as asocials wore brown instead. The Star of David may have been the most prominent, but across the Nazi regime, many people suffered. And while war films are bombastic, entertaining, and heartbreaking, they only capture a small snippet of the full picture.